Have you ever seen the original color of farm-raised salmon? I haven't. So it's like a grayish color. Have you ever asked a waiter how they caught their fish? The fact that they come in a can like that is just mm -hmm. like, it's just not right. They look gross. I know. I remember one time we were on a family vacation and you ordered fish and the fish oh, head yeah. came on the plate and you sent it back. I couldn't eat it. Couldn't eat it. No, it was disgusting. How often either you see yourself or others consuming it. I'd really only try to have the better category, maybe Welcome back, everybody, to episode 19 of the Clean Kitchen Podcast. I'm Kyle. I'm Kevin. And Kevin. Yeah. So we've talked about chicken. Mm. We've talked about eggs. Mm. We've talked about milk. We've talked about meat. It's only appropriate we talk about seafood next. Yeah. But there's good and there's bad seafood, right? There are. Yeah. And it can be confusing. So mm. we're going to break it all down for you. We're going to go through a long list of fish, and we're going to categorize them in the famous bad, better, best model that we have here at the Clean Kitchen Pod. And make sure you stay till the end because those best fish, they got some serious health benefits. But before we start talking about specific fish, there are three things that you need to know about that apply to all fish. Mm -hmm. The first thing that we want to talk about is heavy metals. Do all fish have some sort of heavy metals in them? So I'll get to that question in a little bit later, but there's basically two specific types of heavy metals found in a majority of fish, and it's mercury and lead. And consuming too much of these heavy metals is very bad for our body. It can lead to um, central nervous system problems. It can disrupt our hormones and the production and the balance of hormones, and it can even impair our brain function. So we definitely want to steer clear of the fish that are high in heavy metals. And okay. getting back to your question, yes, there are fish that are high in heavy metals. There are some that are not as bad. And then there are some that are very, very low. So we're going to get to the ones that are very low later on. Um, but those are going to be your best option. Okay. And heavy metals, it seems like no matter what I hear about fish, that always seems to be something that I need to be thoughtful of. How actually do heavy metals get into fish? Yeah. So I guess I'll mainly talk about mercury because that's the main heavy metal found in fish, but mercury specifically, it can get into the ocean just through the environment, like natural processes, uh, like volcano eruptions, mm -hmm. and then also certain human activities. So like gold mining is an example, and then just the production of certain chemicals or whatever, it can get into, um, into our oceans. And then unfortunately, our fish can get contaminated. And the prevalence of heavy metals, specifically mercury in fish, is kind of just going up and up. It's not It's not getting better, unfortunately. Yeah, we talked, like you said, we talked about, uh, we talked about beef, we talked about chickens, eggs. No, none, none of that ever came up with mercury or lead or any of that. No. So it, it's a specific fish problem that yeah, we have here. Correct. Okay. Yeah, you're not going to find, You're uh, at least I've never even heard of beef being contaminated with heavy metals or chicken being contaminated with heavy metals. The only way that I think it could work into those animals mm -hmm. is if it somehow got into the feed mm. of the animals, which is why it's just another reason to go for 100% grass fed, regeneratively raised beef because it's very high quality yep. and there shouldn't be any heavy metals in it and uh, pasture raised chicken as well, preferably regeneratively raised. Um, so, you know, they're uh, committed to very high standards. Yeah, yeah. That's something I think that's important here is that with all those other food groups, it was the the manufacturers or the the farmers that were adding something to the the chicken stock or how, it was how they were raising them. Whereas with fish and specifically related to heavy metals, it's it's almost like these indirect environmental factors are playing a role in what benefits and and maybe harms have the fish have for right. us. Yeah, it's definitely it's not as controlled. Yeah, of, of that's an, a good way to say of it. an environment of an environment. And there's actually also some other industrial chemical toxins like PCBs. That's one of the most common mm -hmm. um, that can also leak into streams and rivers and then eventually get into the ocean. And these, man, these chemicals are very, very toxic to the body and they take years and years to finally be detoxed and eliminated from our body. So yeah, it, it's it's scary stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So that's the, the first thing that we need to be thoughtful of with any fish is the, the amount of mercury or lead that that uh, is contained in that fish. Mm -hmm. The second thing we want to talk about, and this is something that I hear a lot, but I want you to break it down a little bit for me. Farm-raised fish. What exactly does farm-raised fish mean? Yeah, so there's farm-raised fish and there's wild-caught fish. 
General rule of thumb, I always recommend going for wild caught if you can find it. Mm -hmm. There are certain countries that have better standards than others uh, when it comes to farm raised, but basically uh, you may have seen pictures of, of this before, but it's basically kind of like a pen. There's a circle in the in the ocean and it's basically like a farm, mm -hmm. like for, as, as exactly as it sounds, farm raised salmon. So um, these fish are contained in a very small area and many times it can be thousands of fish in this one area and they're controlling what the fish is consuming. So they're, they're not eating their natural diet mm -hmm. of other fish or I guess algae and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know what fish eat, but yeah. Smaller fish yeah, usually. Smaller fish. <laughs> yeah. Um, so most of the time these fish are getting some sort of feed and unfortunately what feed are they going to be giving them? The same exact thing that they give cows and chicken, GMO grains, corn, and soy. Yep, the cheap stuff. Yeah, but one note to that, have you ever seen the original color of farm-raised salmon? I haven't. So it's like a grayish color. It uh -huh. comes out gray, and people are like, okay, well, how do they get that to turn pink? Well, they actually give the salmon, the fish, a uh, there's a certain dye or pigment in their food that turns it pink oh my gosh so it actually comes out gray but people aren't gonna eat gray salmon so yeah so now you're getting some sort of pink. artificial coloring yeah with your fish yes exactly do you remember we always used to go to to disney there was one ride that we went on quite a bit where you go in a little boat and you go around and there's all these different mini ecosystems yeah. that you see do you remember there oh, used to be yeah. a fish farm yeah in that little boat that you'd see and it'd be like what it would seem like as a kid hundreds of fish in like yeah. this little box I do and remember it, that. It always smelled bad. Yeah. And it was gross. Like it was like I would never want to eat one of those fish. Oh man. I was We're, having flashbacks as we were researching oh, yeah. to I, that ride. Now that you say that, I do remember that. Yeah. What, do you remember if they were like raising those fish to be eaten? Or? I don't know what they were doing with those yeah, fish, but it was always just part fish. of the tour. Yeah. There was all these different it seemed like little ecosystems. Yeah. That they well, were there was building. like a lot of plants yes. and Fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. Uh huh. And then, yeah, I do remember going through the fish. Yeah, you'd always have to hold your nose. Oh, it's gross. Yeah. yeah. That's all I was thinking about when you're talking farm raised fish. Well, unfortunately, that's probably not too far off from the uh, what farm raised fish are actually like. Obviously, they're in the ocean, but yeah. they're contaminated. They're contained in this very small uh, space. Yep. Which is not natural for fish to be. Yeah. And the reason, going back to the wild caught versus farm raised salmon, the reason that these farm raised salmon are a grayish color is because they're not swimming through streams or swimming throughout the ocean and using their muscles because the more fish use their muscles, the darker, the color, darker red slash orange, uh, they become, mm -hmm. I guess. So that's why wild caught salmon is like a dark orange color. Yeah. You probably get a lot of the, the nutrients and benefit of that fish working hard passed on to the, the consumer yeah. of that of that salmon. So yep. more benefits there. Yep. Um, so I guess we, we talked a little bit about the mercury and lead. We talked about these farm-raised fish. A, a lot of what we've talked about so far sounds bad. What, what, uh, what are the good things about fish? What can I look forward to? This is the third thing we want to hit on. We interrupt this podcast to remind you of the Clean Kitchen Agreement. But Kevin, yes? I want to do something different this okay. time. A lot of people are watching this podcast. Not a lot of people are leaving reviews. Mm -hmm. We want that to change, spe specifically on Apple Podcasts. Mm -hmm. We want that to change. So what are we going to do? We are going to offer 10 lucky people. Uh, 10? 10. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> that leave a five-star review. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, I mean, I guess it technically, no, five-star. Yeah. Five-star. I was going to say four-star, but yeah. no. Five-star five -star review. <laughs> Five star review. Leave a five star review, and when you, when it prompts you to type in your name or your username or whatever it is, type in your Instagram mm. username. Okay. I repeat, type in your Instagram username when it prompts you to type in your name, and we will be reaching out to ten lucky people via Instagram. So check those DMs. I will DM you on Instagram, and we will be sending you a fifty dollar wow. gift card to. Whole Foods? Whole Foods, yeah. Whole Foods is nationwide. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll send you a Whole Foods gift card. If you don't have a Whole Foods near you, we'll send you a Visa gift card or we'll, we'll work something out. We'll reach out to you. But five-star review, 10 lucky people, $50 gift card. Get it done. We appreciate your support. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to share this with a friend. And also, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe mm. and don't forget to leave a rating on Spotify as well. But this specific gift card giveaway is only applicable to Apple Podcasts. Yeah, so there's three main health benefits to consuming 
fish, seafood, shellfish, all same category here. Um, the first one is it's very high in omega threes. Mm. This is probably one of the best sources besides pasture raised eggs of omega three fats. This includes DHA and EPA and DHA is great for your brain, your nervous system, your eyes and EPA, um, is great for your heart. It can pre prevent heart disease and is also anti-inflammatory. So it's got those omega threes, basically all, all the best, all the better and best seafood that we're about to talk about, yeah. I'd say has good, healthy omega-3 fats. So that's the main benefit. Uh, another thing, it's just a great source of high quality protein. It contains all essential amino acids. We've talked about this many times before, but beef, chicken, eggs, they all contain all essential amino acids. Same case here with seafood. And then uh, it's rich in so many different vitamins and minerals. So uh, things like vitamin D, vitamin B12, iodine, selenium, and the list goes on and on about uh, on the uh, different minerals that fish have. Good. A lot of benefits there. Do you consume fish? I don't consume fish often. Mm. No. I'd say like maybe if I go to the beach or something. Yeah. But it's not it's not part of my regular diet, but I would like to include certain types of fish more. Yeah. And my doctor actually recommended a couple of types that I start including more in my diet to yeah. get those healthy omega 3s. Um, which we'll get to, I think, towards the end. Perfect. Yeah, I like that. All right, so let's get into the, the specific types of fish then, starting with the bad fish. The bad. The, the bad. The fish you probably want to avoid if you can. And these tend to be fish that are higher on the food chain. Why is it that fish that are higher on the food chain are fish that we want to avoid? Well, you think about it. The larger fish, and I'm going to throw out a few examples here now of the fish that you should probably be avoiding basically all the time mm -hmm. uh, because they're so high in mercury specifically, but these heavy metals. And that's shark and swordfish. And we'll get to a couple of other here in a second. But think about it. These are the biggest fish, some of the biggest fish in the ocean. So they're consuming, you know, the medium sized fish that consumed the smaller fish. And basically, as you work your way up the food chain, more and more heavy metals are accumulating in, in their body from the fish that they've eaten. Yep. Yeah, these are the predators. Yeah. These are the ones that are out there getting all, all the other fish. And along with that, they because they're predators, they have a longer lifespan. And they eat, just eat more than a small fish would because it just doesn't last as long in the ocean. Right. Um, so it just means that, that they're consuming more and more mercury. They're more dense and uh, more likely to, to have those high levels. Right. To they're, Exactly. They're dense, so they're going to accumulate these heavy metals more. So okay. like I said, shark swordfish, uh, grouper, mm -hmm. and mackerel. Those are kind of the, the the ones that test the highest in heavy metals, specifically mercury. And then tuna is also a big one. Tuna is very dense. Um, there are specific types of brands out there that test to ensure their tuna is below certain limits. Mm -hmm. uh, so my favorite brand would be Safe Catch, and I believe this is yellow, yellow fin tuna. Um, and they test to ensure that the level of mercury in their tuna is below 0.1 parts per million. Mm. And that, and just to give you an idea, that's 10 times uh, stricter than the FDA limit. Okay. So they're very strict on the amount of mercury that is allowed in their tuna. Yeah. Tuna, of the ones that you just listed, tuna would, to me, be the one that would be most common. 100%. Yeah. For sure. Yep. Yep. So uh, that, so uh, if you if you can find that brand, I know they're out. Costco. That's I, I bought them before, mm -hmm. um, and then there are, I had a bunch of other stores as well. But if you can find that brand, and then also Chunk Light Tuna, uh -huh. maybe you're, you've maybe seen that on a can yeah, before. Uh, that specific type of tuna also normally has about a third of the mercury content mm -hmm. as other tuna. So that's not a, a brand; it's a type of tuna. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah. There's a bunch of different brands. So chunk light is what you want to. That's what you look for. Look for or, or light. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So of of the ones that we've listed here as bad, the reason that they're in this category is because of the mercury levels, and the reason that tuna has a an almost an asterisk there is because some types of tuna and some companies have done extra steps in order to mitigate the amount of mercury. Correct. Okay. Hundred percent correct. All yes. right. It's it's really just the amount of heavy metals and mercury, specifically mercury, that are in these fish, which is why I believe and many other uh, experts believe that we really shouldn't be consuming these types of fish a whole lot. Got it. Any other bad fish that we should be trying to avoid? Just a couple other ones like wild sea bass and then uh, 
Have you have you had that one before? No, I never had that. Yeah, me either. No. <laughs> <laughs> of, of the fish that we've said, how many have you had? Uh, we've got tuna, shark, mackerel, grouper. I don't think I've ever had shark. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've definitely had swordfish. Definitely. Really? Where? Yeah. Well, mom makes swordfish meatballs. Oh, she does. Yeah. At uh, Christmas. Yep, that's true. Oh, dang. Cut them. Cut them. Mom. Cut them out, mom. <laughs> Use something else. Um. Yeah, swordfish. I definitely have had swordfish. Definitely had that. Yeah, I'm sure I've had like grouper and mackerel, like when I go to the beach. Yeah, but like not recent, not no, in no. the past few years. Now, not since I've ever, not since I learned about all of this. Right, so, got smart. Yeah, I got smart. Um, wild sea bass, definitely not tuna. It's funny. I ate a lot of tuna growing up. As a kid, you had a lot of tuna. I loved tuna. A little tuna tuna fish sandwich. Tuna fish sandwich. Oh man, oh, you hated tuna. Though. Hated it. I yeah. never had it. Yeah. Always grossed me out. Uh, yeah, get some tuna, throw some mayo in there, get a little salt, salt and pepper, lemon juice, good to go. Uh, but yeah, I don't eat a lot of tuna anymore. No. <laughs> no. What no. about tilapia? That's another one I hear. I think that one's, yeah, that one's really popular. That one would definitely fall under this bad list as well. Yeah. Uh, but no, I don't think, I think that that that's popular in terms of what people eat, I would say. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Those are the main ones. And that one, that one actually isn't, high in heavy metals necessarily mm -hmm. but i think a hundred percent of tilapia is farm raised yeah. there's no wild caught tilapia so uh just given the 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 environment that these fish are living in and then also the feed that they're eating it's just not nutrient dense at all yeah so i i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend it a whole lot right yeah and that's the, the point here maybe with this podcast too is that we're going to go through as many fish as we think is is appropriate here and all the big ones but the framework that we're talking about is thinking about heavy metals thinking about how they're raised thinking mm -hmm. about the benefits and you can apply that to any fish because i know there's there's some exotic fish out there right that people like to eat and if you think about the framework here then you, you can get to whether it's bad better or best yep exactly all right the the heavy metals and the nutrient density yep. basically is what you're taking into account yep exactly all right let's move on to some better fish okay so what fish would you categorize as better for you yeah so there's a few in this category and i think a lot of people are going to be happy that mm -hmm. some of the fish uh fall into this better category and these are specifically fish that are lower in heavy metals mm -hmm. compared to those ones we just talked about so cod mm -hmm. is going to be lower in heavy metals mahi mahi i know that's oh, yeah. a popular one i don't yeah. eat that one a lot but i know that's always on the menu at restaurants. always on the menu always on the menu uh shrimp uh-huh po very popular very popular one yeah. I, I consume shrimp every once in a while i'll go for wild caught shrimp don't go for farm-raised shrimp. Always try to get mm. wild-caught. Um, crab, relatively low in heavy metals. Mm -hmm. And lobster, another popular one. Yeah. And flounder, yeah, also low in heavy metals. A lot of good ones here. The yeah. common theme is that all these fish are smaller mm. than, than the first fish, yep, exactly. group of fish that we talked about. Yep, so they're not going to accumulate those heavy metals as much. Yeah, so the, you mentioned shrimp there. That That's a very popular fish to consume. And a lot of times people will get it at restaurants. With restaurants, it can be tougher to determine if it's farm raised or if it's wild caught do you have any experience have you ever asked a waiter how they caught their fish that's not something i've ever asked but it's definitely something i should ask mm -hmm. and i'd say if you are near the beach or at the beach i'd say i'd like to think there's a higher chance that it is wild caught mm -hmm. um but unfortunately i bet a lot of restaurants are cutting corners and saving money and going for the farm raised. Yeah. And I, I ha the only time I've really noticed it is if it specifically says wild caught. We mm -hmm. went to a restaurant somewhere in Florida. I don't think you were there, but our other family members yeah. were there. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Sorry, I think he got left out of that vacation. Uh, but I remember they specifically had wild caught salmon mm. on the menu. And they put it, you know, they put it big. They, they, they let you know that their salmon is wild caught. Right. And same thing, they actually had grass-fed beef too, and they put 100% grass-fed beef. Yeah. So, I yeah, if if a if a restaurant has is truly wild selling wild-caught fish, I'd like to think they're happy about it and they put it on the menu right. to kind of show off. Yeah, you want to be you're proud of that. Yeah, so exactly. Make sure. Ex exactly. Yeah. But for for those shopping in store, it'll always say farm-raised or wild-caught. Oh yes, it'll okay. always say yeah. If it doesn't say it on the front, turn it over and look at the back. It, it's it's gonna be somewhere. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So those are the better for you fish. Now let's move on to the best types of fish for you. What would you classify as the best types of fish? So these are going to be the ones that are the smallest, basically, mm -hmm. because they're not going to accumulate these heavy metals, mm -hmm. and they're not going to be consuming other fish that are already high in heavy metals. So a few 
of my favorite types of fish are going to be sardines, anchovies. Oh, your eyes got big when I said sardines. Yeah, I, I want to revisit that. Okay. Go ahead. All right, all right. I'll keep going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oysters, scallops, mussels, and wild caught salmon. Okay. That those would be ones that I would expect, especially salmon. Salmon is always it feels like no matter what list you look at, one of the best fish to eat. The sardines. I want to revisit because I remember it must have been early on when you started the Instagram account. You got really into sardines. Yeah. And you you tried them out once and you're like, they're really good. Are they? Are they really good? Yeah. I, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Taste wise, you T- mean? Yeah, taste wise. Yeah. I, they look gross. I know. Yeah. They got a well, tough wrap. I think it's it, it's the fact that they come in a can like that is just mm-hmm. like it's just not right. It's yeah. it's it's doing sardines dirty. They deserve yeah. they deserve better. Yep. <laughs> and, they and they also since they have the skin on them mm-hmm. it just makes it look even more gross yeah. and i'm someone who if i get in the ocean and a and a fish comes up and swims next to me and touches me i freak out <laughs> like, i don't like i don't like that no so s- seeing i remember the first time do you remember the video oh. that i posted when i first tried sardines the yeah, very yeah. first time yeah i opened the can and i see the skin and i'm like that's disgusting yeah like am i really gonna eat this but then I smelt it and I was like, it doesn't, it doesn't have like, I was expecting it to smell like fishy. It uh-huh. doesn't smell fishy. I tasted it plain with nothing on it. And it basically just tasted like tuna. Did you eat the skin? Yeah. And there are bones in there. Yeah, yeah. there's bones, but it's like, it's very small and it's just like a slight crunch maybe, uh-huh. but you can't really taste it. <laughs> you can't taste it. <laughs> You're really selling it. I know it sounds gross. Uh, but no, it kind of just tasted like tuna to me, especially if you add, which I did some Mm -hmm. mayo, some mustard, some lemon juice, some salt and pepper. Yeah. It tasted very similar to tuna, you know, tuna in a can, not like raw tuna. Right. Right. Or like tuna that you would get at a sushi restaurant. Yep. Yeah. I remember one time we were on a family vacation and you ordered fish and the fish head came on the plate. That was in London, right? Oh, it might've been in London. Yeah. And you sent it back. I couldn't eat it. Couldn't eat it. Couldn't eat it. Couldn't let, have that fish stare back at you. No, it was disgusting. Yeah. I was like, I was so hungry. I was like, yeah. oh, I'm You're so excited grumpy. for this. They bring out a full fish. I'm like, are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah. With eye and everything. It was disgusting. Yeah. Nope, couldn't eat it. No. Send it back. So sardines you were able to fight through. I was, yeah. And that was like, that that specific time, that was before I was kind of healthy. So mm-hmm. I was, I knew about the health benefits when I first tried sardines so i was like i gotta power through i gotta at least try it and then yeah. i tried it and i was like i was hooked yeah it seemed like you had them pretty often i had them every day for lunch basically yeah i had for a can, how long? can of sardines for probably four f- months or so three mm-hmm. or four months maybe wow because I, I would always have i would have my arugula salad uh-huh. a lot of arugula a can of sardines and then i'd top it with a bunch of nuts and seeds and salad dressing and some fruit and I always notice, and this is kind of getting off tangent, but I always mm-hmm. noticed after, so I always go for walks after my meals. Mm-hmm. And every time I would have this salad, I would go for a walk and I would always get like a really bad cramp, mm-hmm. like a sharp pain in my stomach. And it was very uncomfortable, obviously. Mm-hmm. So I eventually stopped eating the salads and I switched over to basically beef and eggs. Yeah. And a few weeks later, I noticed the pain went away. Do you think it was the fish or do you think it was the, the salad? No, I don't think it was the fish. Uh-huh. I think it was I think it was the fact that I was like eating a ton of leafy greens. And I'm not saying leafy greens are in arugula is bad. I'm just mm-hmm. saying maybe I, they weren't the best for me. Mm-hmm. I think it was the combination of that and also like the nuts and seeds may have been difficult to digest. Yeah. So I just kind of went total 360 and I was like, well, if, I, if I'm going to, because I was like, at first I was like, let me cut out the salad because I may have too much going on here. Mm-hmm. And when I did that, I tried sardines plain a couple times, but I was like, it's not the same with yeah. like you needed the greens. I yeah. needed the salad dressing and the greens and all of that to go along with it. So then the sardines kind of fell out of my diet. Yeah. yeah. It's not like a little snack. You just open no. up a can of sardines no. and, and munch on I them. mean, maybe some people do, but no, I can't do that. No. It, it was good when I combined it with all of this other stuff, but when I had it by itself, I was like, yeah, I'd rather just have beef. Yeah, yeah. Not and, for you. Yeah. I also read that there are different ways i guess that the the sardines are are served within the can mm. it can be in water or it can be in oil yes do you have a any thought on that so definitely watch out for it if it's in oil watch out for soybean oil or canola oil soybean oil is going to be the main type of oil that you'll see in sardines mm-hmm. so watch out for that 
Uh, preferably, I just say to get it in water. Yeah, they do have some that are in olive oil or extra virgin olive oil, which is also great. But you don't know how long it's been sitting on the shelf. Uh, it could go. It could kind of go bad at that point. Mm-hmm. So, if you can get it, I'd recommend just going for water, and then add your own extra virgin olive oil on top if you really want the el- the extra healthy fats. Yeah, that seems to be the safer option because then with those seed oils, you're getting all those omega six fatty acids that we're trying to avoid in the first place, um, and you're almost counteracting the omega three benefits. Yeah, exactly. And that's getting back to the nutrient density of these fish, sardines and anchovies specifically. Mm-hmm. They're extremely h- low in heavy metals. They're extremely high in omega-3 fats. And they're also high in a lot of other uh, minerals like selenium and copper. And actually, a note about selenium. Selenium actually helps detox heavy metals out of your body. Hmm. And the good thing is, is that a lot of these fish that still can contain some heavy metals, you're kind of getting the selenium, which almost offsets the heavy metals and helps um, your body detox it out of your out of your body. Yeah, na- a natural detox. Yes, a natural detox. Interesting. So, yeah, that's another another good thing about sardines and anchovies. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see yourself adding anchovies back in? So that so this is what my doctor told me to try to add back in mm-hmm. a couple of times a week, some sardines and anchovies whenever I can. I definitely would. Yeah. It's it's not a bad snack. If I mix it with some mayo and some mustard and some lemon juice and salt and pepper, it tastes pretty good. Mm-hmm. Definitely not something I could eat every day. No. Absolutely not. But a couple times a week, I think I could throw it you in. You make it work. Yeah, I make it work. Yeah. Yeah. You also mentioned oyster scallop and mussels as some other of the, the best fish category. Same kind of idea here with the benefits? Very similar. Yeah. yeah. They're low in heavy metals, all three of these. Low in heavy metals, high in omega-3s, and high in many different vitamins and minerals, vitamin B12, and minerals like zinc, iron, copper, manganese, specifically in oysters, uh, is very high. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, same thing goes for mussels, uh, high in selenium, and a good amount of trace minerals as yep. well. Yep. And then the crown jewel of fish, salmon, wild-caught salmon. Is is it, again, the same sort of benefits that you're seeing here, or is there additional ones? Basically the same thing. Just try to make sure you go for wild-caught. Yeah. But yeah, high in omega-3s. Uh, I'd say this is probably... The, the most popular yeah. type, uh, type of fish. Um, so, yeah, it, I mean, it's great that this falls into the best category. But, yeah, wild caught, um, high, in, high in many vitamins and minerals, high in good high-quality protein, and low in heavy metals. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I want to talk about how often you recommend or, or what you've seen recommended for consuming fish, especially – the ones in the better and best category. But b- before we do, I want to compare first salmon to to beef quickly because that can be a, a popular decision for people at a restaurant, whether they want beef, chicken, or, or salmon. How do you compare salmon specifically to something like a, a steak or ribeye or, or even just ground beef? Well, yeah. Well, when you're comparing it in terms of, I guess, toxicity mm-hmm. or basically the heavy metals, mm-hmm. I'd say beef definitely wins in that department. Um, I would also say that Beef is probably more nutrient dense in terms of the vitamins and minerals. Mm-hmm. It de- uh, beef definitely does not have as many omega three fats though, mm-hmm. which is where salmon has much more. But if I were choosing one at a restaurant, I mean, I would, I would, I would go for wild caught salmon maybe. Um, if it if it was wild caught, wild caught, yeah, it feels like one of those where you're at the right place and you know it's wild caught, then salmon is a great option for yes, you. Yes, yes. Otherwise, beef may be the safer option. Yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah. And the reason I ask this is, is because there was a recent study that came out from Harvard. Oh, yes, very recent. Very, just came out. Yeah. I think when we're, as of recording, it came out maybe three or four days ago. Yeah. And the, the high-level conclusion from that, that study said that eating red meat twice a week may increase type 2 diabetes risks. Uh Uh-oh, I eat ground beef. I eat beef every day. Every day. Sounds like like my risk of type 2 diabetes is going through the roof. That's that's what you would want to think, or you'd be led to think. Yeah. Based on That's not what I want to think. No. Yeah. yeah, Led to think. Led to think. (laughs) Um, But there's a couple reasons why you might not be able to fully trust this study. What what are those reasons? Yeah. So full transparency, I haven't taken a deep dive Mm -hmm. into this study, uh, but I have seen some... I have read some articles and different and different things of people speaking out about this study, and it seems like there are some flaws within mm-hmm. this study. One of them being that, uh, well, first of all, first off, it was an observational study. It wasn't an in- inter- interventional uh, controlled study. So basically, 
observational study just means, you know, there's a group of people and every so often they're giving them questionnaires to fill out. Mm -hmm. Hey, what are you eating? Mm -hmm. And then they do some blood markers and then they basically make conclusions based off of that. Yep. So first off, observational study, not necessarily bad, but a little bit of a red flag Mm -hmm. and kind of gives you the idea, okay, we got to take a closer look at this. Mm -hmm. And when you take a closer look at this, it turns out the definition of red meat for this specific study included things like sandwiches and lasagna (laughs) because there's meat in, I guess, sandwich meat and Mm -hmm. meat in lasagna. Yeah. So they were counting that as red meat. Yep. Not really what I would think of red meat as. (laughs) No. (laughs) No. Because if you're counting it a sandwich, that's a burger. And if I'm getting a burger, I'm, I'm probably getting fries and there's a bun associated with that and, of course. and other things, of course. which could impact the results of the study. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, just even think like, just just take ketchup, for example. Yeah. Everyone put, puts ketchup on there. Well, guess what? You're getting some high fructose corn syrup in there too. Yeah. That will increase your <laughs> yeah. risk of type 2 diabetes. Right. So definitely an immediate flaw right yes. away of what they're just categorizing red meat as. And if that wasn't enough, point number two is that In these questionnaires that they were, or these surveys that they were giving to people, Mm -hmm. they weren't even taking into account sugar and grains Hmm. in the surveys. Some sugar, which would have a direct impact on your risk of type 2 diabetes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I I mean, beef in and of itself shouldn't even have an impact on your glucose glucose levels because it it contains no glucose. Right. It's protein and fat. Right. There's no sugar or carbs (laughs) in meat. Yeah. So like, uh, there's a lot about this study that just makes me, makes me think. Yeah. Out of Harvard too? Right. I think that's a trend, though, from what we've seen, right? In the 1960s? Yeah, that's right. They were paid off. Yeah. Maybe they were paid off in this Maybe. one, too. It'll come out years later. Yeah. Harvard studies. Harvard scientists paid off again. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that was the other thing. And then I know as well, um, they didn't adjust for a higher BMI. So mm-hmm. if someone had a BMI, they, a higher BMI, they didn't adjust for that. Right. Another important factor in, in type 2 diabetes. Yes, exactly. Yes. So the, the important stuff, like sugar and BMI, not accounted for, and and high fructose corn syrup, red meat accounted for. Yeah, red meat bad. <laughs> yeah. and anything to fit this red meat bad get, yeah. get, uh, narrative. It's a shame. It is. Red meat needs a, a better marketing team. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah. They need someone gotta get a- I'm trying. I'm trying to market them. Yeah. Red meat and sardines. <laughs> yeah. Team up on marketing <laughs> and go to market together. Yeah. Okay. So that that's just some, some information to maybe think about for this recent study, if, if you happen to see it. Um, so let's get back to seafood. So we want to talk about how often you should be consuming the, the better and the best because we know bad, we'll just rule it out. Okay. So the, the better and the best, how often do you even, you, either you see yourself or others consuming it? Well, I'd say even, I mean, swordfish fell in the bad, but. That's true. I mean, we consume, I guess, once a year. Once a year. Once a year. So yeah. <laughs> it's not that much, but I'd say, yes, minimize the bad as much as you possibly can. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're going to have it a few times throughout the year, maybe that's, that's probably fine. Yep. Um, so we'll focus on the better category here. I'd really only try to have the better category maybe once or twice a week. Mm. And this is my recommendation, but also many other experts and doctors' recommendations as well. Uh, so yeah, so the better once, two times a week. But then the best, I don't think you have to be as worried about it. If you're consuming things like sardines, anchovies, mussels, scallops, uh, wild-caught salmon, I'd say, I mean, you probably could do it daily. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, with the, ca- with the caveat of you should probably get your heavy metals checked and you can just go to, uh, lab corp or whatever and get uh, a blood test for this mm-hmm. and get your heavy metals checked specifically mercury and lead. Yeah. I'd say those are probably the, the two most prevalent heavy metals in our, in our food today. So yeah, just be aware of that. Um, a lot of people have heavy metal toxicity from eating too much seafood and they develop all sorts of problems. So it's a, definitely something to check and ensure that your heavy metals are not too high. And if they are high, then you should definitely lay off basically all seafood Mm -hmm. for at least uh, an extended period of time. Yeah. I think those heavy metals can stay in your body. I think we said eight to 12 months. Yeah. So just be very careful of that. And the other thing you said, you, you consumed sardines every day for three months, Yeah. but you also listened to your body and you said, I'm getting a weird cramp. Yeah. That, let me let me cut this out. Yeah. So always listen to your body. Yeah, which wasn't well. maybe not necessarily the sardines that no, was doing that, but, but I did listen to my body. You listened to your body. Yes. Um. And and now no cramps. Yeah. No cramps. Yeah. No cramps. Yeah. Monkey never cramp. Monkey always eat banana. <laughs> uh. So oh, and I just want to say one more one more note. A lot of people think that just because something is wild caught 
means it doesn't have any heavy metals in it. I get mm -hmm. that question a lot on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, it still does. Okay. Wild caught fish does still have heavy metals. That's good to know. So that's just a yeah. note. Just a, a lower amount, potentially? Not even necessarily. Okay. Actually, in some cases, farm-raised salmon actually tests lower in heavy metals hmm. than wild caught. So it's more about the size of the fish that determines the amount of heavy metals. I'd say yes, the size of the fish and also geographically mm. where that fish is coming from mm. because there's certain parts of the ocean that are higher in heavy metals than others. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Depending on if they're close to a factory. Exactly. Um, whatever pollutants are nearby. Exactly. Makes sense. Yep. I think that's going to be it for episode 19 of the Clean Kitchen Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. If you found this helpful, share this with a seafood-loving friend. We appreciate your support, and we'll see you next week in episode 20. Thanks. Thanks.